Hey everyone, Brandon and Kyle back again at the Kabuki Strength Lab and today we're going to be talking about elbow position in the back squat. And this is one of the most common questions we get when it comes to setting up most squat variations is where should my elbows be? Uh, there's a few things that people are going to look for and one dead giveaway on elbow position is that they're really high. A lot of times people assume that they need to be perfectly to your side and tucked really hard and in this like kind of quote unquote ideal position, but that's just not really true. And one thing that we need to preface with this discussion is we're not really concerned about where the elbows are as coaches. For us uh, at Kabuki Strength, we're really looking at the function of your thoracic spine and your scapula because those two things are going to drive the position of your elbows. You can fake your elbow position and get it into to a good position but it might have adverse effects on your actual spinal mechanics and how your scapulas are actually helping you to support your shoulder girdle so we're going to talk about that here Kyle you want to be our demo Dem Demi you want to get that bar in your back Kyle now Kyle is not incredibly bendy but we're going to try and show you a couple uh, faults that we would commonly see within uh, elbow position issues. The first one is really high elbows. This is going to be a problem because people are more likely to get tipped forward at the bottom of the squat as they come up. They're going to have less total stability through their trunk which is going to be very bad when we are trying to uh, transfer energy through the spine um, and it's also a, a bad position because the scapulas are really in this elevated position, almost in this shrug position. This is very common for individuals who breathe really high into their chest and they do one of these elevation type breathing uh, strategies for stability. So that's gonna be number one. But people often will try and get away from this really high position by just jamming their elbows into their sides. Now if we just cue elbow position, this might look pretty good. But you know, obviously Kyle's wrist not in a good spot there, but we're not really focused on coaching that. What's going to happen is if you have an incredibly immobile T-spine and scapula, and you go to just fix your elbow position, chances are you're going to end up putting yourself into massive extension of the spine to get there. So you really didn't change any of the mechanics that happened at the scapula or the, or the thoracic spine for improvement. You actually just changed what they were doing in from flexion to extension. That's going to cause a whole other host of problems, especially downstream at the hip, you're gonna end up with more of a pelvic tilt and other things associated with that. So we're not concerned about where the elbow is, uh, really. More so, we're concerned about what the what the thoracic spine is doing and what the scapulars are doing. So we're gonna show you two drills on how we can improve both T-spine function and scapular function for a uh, high bar or low bar back squat. We're going rack and cow. Now the first thing we're always gonna start with is the thoracic spine. The thoracic spine is going to set the foundation for the scapulas to actually do their job and it's going to set the foundation for the shoulders to function throughout their entire uh, possible active mobility. Kyle, let's go ahead and go with the uh, thoracic extension drill. Now I'm just going to take a knee with this drill and let Kyle do it um, as if my knee were a bench. We just don't have a bench over here so we're going to show you uh, like this. If you do have a bench, do this so you don't have to uh, use your Brandon equivalent. In this position, Kyle's going to try to force his sternum to the ground as hard as he can while extending these points. Now, we want to be very aware of not extending through the lumbar spine in this drill. We want to be pressing through the sternum to the ground and trying to get as much uprighting through this thoracic spine as possible. Now, we're not going to get a huge, massive amount of extension happening through this thoracic spine, but we should get back to about neutral, which is what we should be looking for. If you're already there, that's where we want to stay. Now the next drill that we're going to have you do is on a wall. Come over here, Tom. Let's go with a uh, wall angle. Now in this drill, we're really teaching scapular retraction. If you are an individual who has uh, that issue of elbows really high in the squat, chances are your scapula is really riding up your back almost into like an upward elevation and shrugging of the shoulders. So from this position, we actually want Kyle retracting as hard as he can into the wall and using that wall as kind of a base and a, and a reference guide for where he should be. From this position, he can hang out right here, but we have to make sure that he is equally 
pressured into the wall, and this should be pretty challenging. You'll notice Kyle already started a little further away from the wall, and that's because his scapula were fairly tight or immobile. If you had really mobile scapulas and had really good retraction, you would be able to do this with your feet closer to the wall. So that's going to be your goal with this drill. Go ahead and get back into that position, Kyle. Once Kyle's here, he's going to brace so he's not extending through the spine, and he's going to go through a small range of motion up the wall while keeping contact here. Now you'll notice Kyle starts to extend here. It's because this is very challenging for him. So two things you're looking for is extension through the spine and to avoid that and to avoid any, uh, any movement of the hands off of the wall in both of these drills. Anything that you'd like to add there, Coach Kyle? Uh, when we're talking elbow position, a lot of people will neglect their grip width. Obviously, I'm pretty tight and I'm in a rack where I can only go so wide, but just another consideration is going to be grip width. The other thing we really look for is deviation. So Brandon talked about excessive uh, movement here and excessive movement here. Again, we're not so picky on that. Once you find that sweet spot <clears throat> where the scapula is doing its job, we don't want to have deviation of that during the squat either. Right and Kyle out.